This is One on One. The doctor's in the house. She is Dr. Stephanie Sitnik, assistant psychology professor, Department of Psychology and Counseling, Colville University. Good to see you. Nice to see you. Um, I'm fascinated by this whole question that you've been researching, talk about, and teach and help people on. It has to do with screen time. Mm -hmm. Screen time and our young children. We happen to have three, two teenagers and an eight-year-old. And I'm thinking, we're having dinner. What are you doing? And they think they can have the conversation and still be on the screen. Right. How do we give some tangible, practical advice for us, those of us who are parents who are frustrated? Well, I'd say the first thing that maybe to think about is what are you modeling for your kids, right? Hold um, on, we're talking about them, not us. I know, <laughs> I know. But they learn from, from us, right? Um, and it's hard, right? It, it, there's, it's right there. You're so accessible. You have it's to right just, there. yeah, it's, it's always right there. Um, but I think limit setting is really important, Define right? That. We, um, saying, okay, you have a certain amount of time that you're, you can have access to a screen or, or within this sort of restrictions, right? Dinner time maybe is a, a no screen zone for the family. I mean, I, you have to do what works best for each family, but uh, certainly with um, limit setting is important, but then parents have to follow those limits too. We can't just right? say it. Right, exactly. We have to do it mm -hmm. and model it. Exactly. What, what are the, are, who put out some new guidelines on this recently? American Association of Pediatrics put, uh, just released some new guidelines. They had uh, older guidelines that I think they began to realize with the increased access of phones and tablets and computers and uh, that they just weren't very practical. So they, they've adapted those guidelines a little bit to be a little more flexible and, and to kind of incorporate the fact that what every child and family needs might be a little bit different. Doctor, how do we make this whole question of screen time and the technology right in front of us, what are some of the good positive things about it for younger people? And then where does the line cross when we go, hey, this is not good? There are so many great things about it, right? I mean, there's, there, we, even for adults, we, the, the world is open to us now, right? All of kind of the knowledge and we have access to, to things and knowledge and people that we never had before. Um, for younger children, there's a lot of educational programs, there's a lot of educational television shows and apps and things like that that can really be quite helpful, right? They're, they're great. Um, I think the line is more when we have too much use or dependence on use. Or also what they're using it for. Right, or exactly using it for what research, they're using to get information, to, right. to, to tap into something you otherwise wouldn't be aware of, be exposed to. That's one thing. But the constant game playing over and over right. again, I ask myself sometimes, do our kids even know? Or, listen, I, I'll, I'll cop to this. There's sometimes I go on Facebook and I'll think, I gotta get all, I gotta get out of here. Just lost a half hour, yeah. I literally <laughs> have to get out of here. Mm -hmm. You know, and much less if I'm posting something, and then I go, so and so hates me for saying that. Well, why do they hate me? Let me find <laughs> out. What am I doing? I don't even know these people. Right. It's a rabbit much hole. Much less Twitter. Right? Yeah. yeah. Def define the rabbit hole. Oh, I mean, I, th I think we all have experienced this, right? When you sort of think, oh, I'm just gonna go on for a minute or two, I'll just check my email, or I'll just, I'll just go on to Facebook or Twitter, and then all of a sudden, a half hour, 45 minutes later, you think, oh, that, that's not what I planned. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I, I think that happens to all of us to some extent, right? When you are, in fact, practicing what you practice, teach what you teach, mm -hmm. to what degree, being as young as you are, have you been influenced by the technology? Because um, tw someone 20 years older than you plus in your field, he or right. she may not approach this the same way, but you're pretty close to this. Well, I, I don't know if I'm, well, thank you. I don't know if I'm as close as, <laughs> as But I, you're relatively um, close. I mean, I, I, when I first went to college, when I was first an undergrad, that was really when you could, I first ever, the internet was kind of starting when we first had email and things like that. And when we did research, we still had to go to the library and still go get the paper book, right. you know? Um, so it's been really exciting being in an academic field that I have access to all of that knowledge, right? right? But I think adults as well as children really have to learn how to be discriminating, right? It, is this a trustworthy source? Is this not a trustworthy source? With my own children, we really try to keep a close watch on what they're consuming. How do you do that? Well, 
I have a so I have a two year old and a seven year old. Uh, with my older son, we really set time limits and we kind of monitor maybe if he wants to play video games or watch television shows or things like that. We we kind of watch what he's doing. We use parental co controls on the computer things like that. Um, with my youngest, we make sure to watch with him so that we can discuss things. Uh, you know, maybe- You gotta be on this. You've gotta be all over. Oh, absolutely, and it, it's changing. I mean, I have no doubt that in a few years that my, my oldest son will far supersede me in terms of his technolo technological skills, so right? Can, sorry for interrupting, the time we have left. Uh, no. Older children, um, we have sons who go on the internet and they'll say, Dad, I read such, such and such in the news. I go, really, you read that in the news? I don't know what that's coming from, and I have to ask where it is, and I think that's a source that's not only biased, but they're set up Absolutely. to be biased. Mm -hmm. They admit they're biased, and our kids can't tell the difference sometimes between that and right. some objective information source. Mm -hmm. What about that whole piece of it? Some of us adults can't either. That's right? right. I mean, I think that that's something that the sooner we start teaching uh, children to be critical, is really important that we do that as, as quickly as possible, right? To, where is this coming from? Why might they want us to have a particular slant or not? So that they can start to make those kind of decisions, right? Is this right. a trustworthy source or not? A few seconds left. Um, children with special needs? Yes. What do you want to say here as it relates to screen time? Technology has been really great in terms of some of the apps available, um, communication apps that can increase that, uh, access to just ways to talk with other people, certainly. But I think we, uh, we also have to limit in that regard, too, right? Is the, is the child emotionally able to sort of handle different material, things like that, that we just have to keep a close eye on? Dr. Stephanie Sitnik, who is Assistant Psychology Professor, Department of Psychology and Counseling at Caldwell University, uh, one of our longtime higher ed partners, uh, which I want to disclose, I've, I recently taught a leadership seminar for a group of doctoral students in the field of education some very fine students. Um, I want to thank you for joining us, Stephanie. Thank you for having well me. Well done. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 30 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by the Turrell Fund, supporting right from the start NJ, Atlantic Health System, NJM Insurance Group, Summit Medical Group, New Jersey Resources, PNC Bank, and by Suez. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.